When a conservative speaks on a college campus, anything can happen. We're not gonna fucking eradicate anyone! Outrage boiling over at the University of Buffalo. Mr. Knowles calling for an eradication of transgenderism is a call for genocide. Yeah. Hundreds of students and community members gathered in protest. Do you, do you have anything else to say? Chanting, picketing, and some even needing police restraint. You want to tell me why I should leave? Because transphobia is beta behavior, and you are a beta male. You should leave. Get out, man. No, I'm talking about I'm serious. Get out. So what would cause a liberal lynch mob to attempt to shut me down and intimidate attendees before I uttered a word? You fascist? I look like one. Do I? Yeah. Oh. Can we ask you a few questions? No, I do mine. Thank you. My producer attempted to find out why so many people seemed hell-bent on keeping me out. What brings you out here today? Um, there is a extremist speaker that is speaking at UB tonight. I have some, like, transgender friends, and they were really hurt by, like, a lot of the, the news and, like, a lot of, like, what was happening. I wanted to, like, stand with my community. I think you just perpetuate hate towards lots of people that don't deserve it. Oh, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I think you're mistaken. This many people are here because they don't believe in that hate. They don't want to continue the hate. We're here because we want to drown out the noise that he's making. Have you ever uh, watched one of Michael Knowles' speeches or seen his show in its entirety, not just like one of the clips? I have not, no. I don't need to, though. College students are often uninformed. That's why they're in college. They're supposed to get educated. But it seems they all had the same reason for hating me specifically. For the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. I have seen some of his comments about the trans community specifically. Saying that trans people should be eradicated from our communities. You shouldn't be saying that they should be eradicated if you have never been in their shoes. Can I just tell you we're not gonna fucking eradicate anyone? F you guys. I don't want to eradicate anybody either. Peanuts. Now, where could they have gotten that idea? Numerous headlines after this speech said he wants to get rid of transgender people. Basically just calling for the eradication of trans people. Literally calling for a genocide. Genocidal call. What else could you possibly mean besides getting rid of those people? Now, that was all news to me. I never considered myself a particularly genocidal kind of guy, but that's what the news said almost as if the entire liberal establishment had been intentionally lying about what I said. The university administration dug in its heels and did nothing to correct the record before my speech. Instead, the administrators doubled down on the defamation. Unfortunately, the university only allowed 300 people to come listen to the speech, even though about 1,000 people tried to get tickets. Now, among those who got in, there were a lot who liked what I had to say but there were even a few who came in prepared to disagree with me. And they sat down not just to hear the speech, but sat down opposite me to hash out our differences in person. When one calls to eradicate cancer, one is not suggesting that we ought to murder the cancer patients. So how did these liberal news editors come up with their headline that I wanted to commit a genocide of transgender people? Freedom itself cannot exist without limits. The question before us is not how free our society ought to be, but rather what will delineate the limits of freedom. Becca, thank you for sitting down. Chris. Camilla, Karime, yeah. thank you for sitting down. You were outside of the auditorium with the protesters of this speech. Why were you protesting me? I was genuinely wondering how a man is going to explain how radical feminism is hurting women. Did I convince you? No, no, not, <laughs> not, not really, no. I think you brought up some good points mm -hmm. on like how there are certain types of feminism that aren't great because there's always a radical something that's not good. Mm -hmm. There's always going too far and doing too little. I saw your like poster also and I was like, oh, it's just like, you know, like another speaker just coming in and like talking. And then I started saying, like, transgenderism should be eradicated. And as you know, eradicated is, it's a big word, you know, and... Yeah, eradicated, it's five syllables. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it could, like, be taken into, like, different things, like, you know, like, 
to destroy and everything mm. like that and like to get rid of, which I think that's where you were going with. That is very much, yeah. get rid of. Yeah, yeah. I have some like transgender friends and they were really hurt by like a lot of the, the news and like a lot of like what was happening. I wanted to like stand with my community. My argument is not, uh, as, as some newspapers very irresponsibly reported, that I want to, you know, exterminate people or something. But my argument is that this whole idea of transgenderism is pretty new. You both have friends who identify in this way. There are many more people, right, who say, I am transgender. And so my question is, why are so many more people saying that now? You said that, like, this, like, being transgender is this new ideology. Yeah. It's not. Um, there's evidence of people who were transgender in ancient Greece, Rome. Judaism is an example of a religion that acknowledges, I think, six or seven genders. I don't think that's quite true. And, and my evidence for that would be in the, in the very first book of the Torah, in, the, in Genesis, uh, one of the most prominent lines is that in the beginning, God created man, both male and female created he them. It's not Judaism, um, I think what the original translation, I, I can't cite my source right now, okay, but um, the, from what I've learned going to different like religious schools is that Jew they- Jewish schools? Ju just synagogues, temples, I've tried and like experienced different religions. They said that the original text said Adam and Eve as in one being, one- Well, like, man, yeah, man. So uh, in the earliest chapters of Genesis, you have the creation of man in Adam. And then Eve is created from Adam's rib, uh, but she would be the other sex. What you're citing is this line that a lot of people who are pro-transgender will say, which is, you know, actually in some Native American tribe that I can't quite name right now, uh, I'm sure they believe in a third and a fourth and a fifth gender, but that just isn't true. That is a, uh, that's been made up by white liberals. You know the movie Mulan, Disney? Disney I haven't seen it, but I've All heard right. of it. Mulan, yeah. dresses as a man, right? Goes to war. That's based off of true history. Oh, yes. Cro Cross-dressing has Not occurred in history. just cross-dressing, but people who in went... In Mulan, did, did the female character think she was a man? No. Oh, okay. Why there's so many spikes in, like, people saying that they're transgender is because people are much more comfortable now, hmm. like, going out and saying that they're, like, transgender because they know that there now is, like, that community that will accept them. What if they're not really comfortable, though? There's a guy who pioneered the transgender surgery at Johns Hopkins. His name is Dr. Paul McHugh. And he created the Gender Identity Clinic, and he gave these experimental surgeries to men who thought they were women. And he ended up shutting it down because he said people were not more satisfied in the long run after the surgery. Is it possible that people expressing this transgender identity is not really making them all that happy? No, okay male transitioning into female. So my, my aunt, she was never happier than she was after she transitioned. So she's happy, like she's living her life now that she's transitioned. I've, and you know, it's like, you never know. Like what if they can't feel that way if they stayed how they were? Do you think that the person you now call your aunt, do you think that I would say he, really is a she, it really is a woman? Or is it just kind of a, a little bit of a white lie that we all tell to make this person feel better? No, I, th I think it is, you know, like I think they actually are like female. You know, I think there's just some people out there that are just born in the wrong, in the wrong bodies. Can, can I ask you a question though? Please, like, yeah, yeah. Do you have kids? Yeah. Hypothetically. Right, saying like if your kids want to transition, and they um, tell you like they don't they don't feel like how they. Yeah. Um, how would you respond? Well, I I would hope that the likelihood of that happening would be greatly diminished because I would not be raising them in a culture that would encourage it. And so we do see even if you think that there is a biological component to this gender identity ideology, we do see that in communities and ages that are more encouraging of it, you see the numbers of gender identity uh, cases skyrocket. So I think the fact that we're raising our children in a more traditional kind of environment would at least reduce the possibility. More than one in five Zoomers identifies as LGBTQ+. That's, a, that's about a tenfold increase over the general population. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is catching on. Because now it, they can. 
One in five people is just born that way. You don't think there's any social yeah, there's, contagion? I, again, can't cite the exact source. In my biology class here in the school, we learned that there are some indi biological indicators for gay men. They have a smaller gland in their brain that shows up on scans. Even if that were the case, that wouldn't, that wouldn't uh, change th the way that we necessarily ought to behave. The way that we are born does not imply that we are slaves to our nature, because human beings, unlike the lower animals, have intellect and will. And so because we have a rational will, we can actually curb some of our appetites and bring them into accord with our rational will, which is conscious. Let's say, God forbid, that you know, my kid has any problems, one of which is he struggles with his view of sex or gender. Probably what I would tell him is, hey, love you, buddy, you know, um, but this is reality. And so I would try to, to ballast my kids or any loved one that I have in the truth because there's a great quote from C.S. Lewis on this. He says, if you look for truth, you might find comfort in the end. But if you look for comfort, you will find neither truth nor comfort, only soft soap and wishful thinking to begin. And in the end, despair. Despair because you got nothing to hold on to other than your own fleeting passions. I have lots of trans friends. You have lots of friends who think they're the opposite sex. I have lots of friends but who identify as trans. what if they're mistaken about that? What? What if they're wrong? What if, what if, what if you're wrong about being straight? I guess I would still behave as though I were straight. My view of sex and gender is that our true sexuality and our true gender is not from some deep, deeply hidden and authentic appetite that might be invisible to the public, but is actually prescribed according to our human nature. But who are you to tell people that they're wrong? Well, I'm a man with reason and a moral conscience. And I am a woman with and reason. And I think it's not my place to tell somebody that what they're feeling is wrong. You just told me that I'm wrong about transgenderism. I'm saying how we all choose to live is our business because we live in society. Why is it my business if somebody identifies as a woman or not? Well, because right now women are allowed to have their own bathrooms, and if a man is allowed to identify as a woman in public, women are not allowed to have their but own bathrooms. Do you know bathrooms. a man can just walk into the bathroom at any time, right? But he'll be arrested mm. in, in a normal society. In our society, he, can, he could sue if he were kicked out of the women's bathroom. People right, aren't we, just identifying as trans to look up girls' skirts. Well, some people are. Some people, they're Ooh. crimes. Well, uh, there was a, a pretty prominent crime in Loudoun County where a high school student who wore skirts and identified as uh, gender ambiguous would go into the girls' room and he raped two girls at two different schools. And it was covered up because of the transgender ideology. See, that's I can't swear on it. That's messed up. It's messed up. Um, it's messed up. So, I agree. there. Right? One example, but to, to generalize that to all? I'm not opposed to transgenderism because I think some individual who thinks he's transgender is a really rotten fella. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm only opposed to transgenderism because of the general fact that a man can't become a woman and a woman can't become a man. Because I can know that to be true. And if I can't know that to be true objectively, then I can't really know much of anything at all, right? They choose, you know, to go through those transformations in order to like feel like their soul and their body actually like resonates. So is the idea that your true identity is your soul and your body is only incidental to that? That you, you know, because to even say your true identity, I think, well, your true identity has got something to do with your body, I think. I don't think, I don't think your true identity has nothing to do with your body, right? Yeah, I, think I would we say that. Are, we are our souls. And I think, um, well, growing up in a Catholic church, I think of myself as my soul, and I think that my, my body, you know, it's, it's my flesh, it's temporary. Are you still Catholic, would you say? No. <laughs> no, because, no. you know, the Catholic idea is, yes, of course, we are souls in part, but we are also bodies, and that our bodies and souls have a lot to do with one another, and they're inseparable. So, you know, the Catholic idea would be to say that your soul is in contradicting your body, that wouldn't you could that wouldn't that would not go along with the Catholic idea. And it, it's very interesting that there's this new, maybe religious view, which is that no, our bodies that's not has nothing to do with our true selves. It's, that, that view is called Gnosticism, Gnostic dualism, that we're really our souls and the body is is evil or something like that. But I just wonder, how do we know that's true? How do you know that you're not really, at least in part, your body? They always say mind over body, you know. Because your, your brain, you know, it, it's the thing that controls, like, everything, you know? Like, sends off, like, these signals and... But your brain is your body, too. Your mind is not your body. You know, that's, that's the immaterial part. But the brain is part of your body. It's an organ, right? 
Well, yeah. My primary problem with transgenderism is that it isn't true. And because it's false, there are harmful consequences from it. They're not doing any harm to you. Yeah, well, I, I think that sexual dysfunction has caused a lot of harm. The breakdown of the family, the obliteration of women's rights in private spaces, the mutilation of children, which now we're seeing just abound in the country, the sterilization of children. So I think there are a lot of pretty Did you know that harms. hormone therapy is made, was made for like girls who get their periods at the age of six? You can go on estrogen and it will go back. It'll it doesn't. That's things. what they tell you, but it's not true. And there are a lot of detransitioners who talk about the... the the uh, lifelong effects that... that lifelong, uh, okay. But it's not... Uh, tr Detransitioners, women who have male pattern baldness and a lowered voice for the rest of their life and who are sterile, okay. too. I mean, that's pretty... That's tough. You can't yeah, have kids. Yeah, that happens. Okay, I probably can't have kids either. I have PCOS. So what? Do you think we should sterilize more children? It's not sterilizing kids. No, that is. We were just it's, talking about... It's really not, though. It's, it's stopping them from going through puberty where they don't want to go. I guess maybe we're just using different terms for the Probably. same thing. Probably. But in any case, but I uh, appreciate your, uh, your coming on. And oh, I have you... something for you. Okay. I found it outside. <laughs> I thought you'd really like it. Is this a, uh, a fan letter? Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of them out right. there. right. Radical feminism did ruin my life, and it's me dressed up as, a, as an official from the Biden administration, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> That's, That's crazy. <laughs> It would appear I was not able to change the minds of these young students, but they came, they listened, and they had a conversation. So maybe, just maybe, I was able to plant a seed that could flourish in the future. That's thanks to Young America's Foundation, which puts on these campus events. These students, at least, were willing to come in and listen, not just spend the whole evening shouting outside. So perhaps down the line, those seeds of knowledge will flourish. We can hope, and we can hope that more students will be willing to cross that picket line at future campus events. We'll see you there.